Ray. Welcome back. Joining us now at the set is Kennedy Stewart. And uh, I'm going to just read this because it's quite a long title, although opposition critic could be pretty easy too. Official opposition critic for science and technology. That's correct. Uh, you're spending a lot of time in Ottawa. That's right. Yes, um, as an MP. Yes, yes um, with the NDP. That's right. Right. Um, one of the things they've talked about here is, is the need for a national science policy mm -hmm. and that there isn't one. And, and it's not as if this is, you know, to do with the Harper government. It has to do with the Liberal governments of the past and the Tory governments of the past that nobody has actually come out with an all-encompassing science policy. You're here because your leader would like to see something done. That's right. Why is that? Well, uh we're in an era where knowledge is everything. Uh, we've looked at uh, Canada, and we used to be, you know, primarily natural resources. Then we developed our industrial sector with manufacturing. Uh, you know, natural resources in a lot of regions in the country have diminished, and manufacturing's virtually disappeared. So we have to focus on the knowledge economy now, and science and technology is at the forefront of, of that. So unless uh, we, you know, there, there's lots of money spent on science and technology innovation but it's not necessarily done in an organized fashion and that can, that can cause a waste. Uh, and it can also, I think, what I'm hearing here, is it can cause inconsistency, is that you, you fund a particular uh, pet project for a few years and then, uh, you know, spikes go, you know, you, you fund it, there's a spike in funding, the funding goes away to another pet project and, and it's a very inefficient use so, uh, of, of funding. So uh, the consistency in government funding is very important as well. Well, and that's one of the things that they've talked about here is that to take something from the research and development stage, um, from the lab to the market, takes years. Often politicians aren't in place that long. And even if the party is in place that long, the minister may not be. And he's the one that people have developed connections with. How do you try and fix something like that? Well, it's all about your institutional structure, I think. And it's a making sure that you, uh, you have institutions that work. And then uh, if they are working, then your fu uh, future governments are less likely to fiddle with them. So um, what I don't like what's happening in the debate right now is there is a focus on innovation. There is a focus on the commercialization of product. But, but, but what's happening is there seems to be some blame placed on scientists and universities saying, it's your fault that we're, uh, you know, our productivity is quite low and our innovation in terms of our international comparison isn't at the level where it should be. And I, and I find that is probably not a productive way to look at this. Uh, if you think of the chain of, of how innovation works from, you know, basic uh, research through to technological innovation through to commercialization, the basic research part in Canada is outstanding. Uh, they punch way above their weight, you know, our scientists and researchers, I'm a social scientist myself, a, uh, a, um, a prof on leave from Simon Fraser University, so I, I know how this process works, mm -hmm. and I think we're punching way above our weight, and, and you'd see that internationally very well. Where we're not doing well is business investment in innovation. I think it's a mistake to take money from an area where we're doing very well and shift it over to an area where we're not doing so well. So I'm very concerned, and I think scientists are right across Canada, and I mean this scientists broadly, social scientists as well, mm -hmm. in terms of undermining our future uh, potential for uh, very good discovery and basic research. I've had a chance to speak with some of the, the people who have had lots of, I guess, contact with governments, um, whether it's here in Canada or the US or the UK as well. And I asked them if they think their dealings with politicians are improving, mm -hmm or if they are not. Mm -hmm. And they, to a man and woman, said that it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. Because the politicians today, this was one gentleman's explanation, the politicians today don't come into politics with a lot of life experience. Right. They're more career politicians now, or people who are getting into it for that. And they don't know that they think the same way, perhaps as they did in the past. It's, it's immediate what's going on as opposed to the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Um, you're one of the current politicians yep. um, sitting in the opposition as well, so right. that limits what you can yep. do to a great degree. But if the impression is that it's getting harder to deal with politicians, how do you fix that? Well, for me, I, I really don't fall under that category because I've been a tenured professor for quite a long time and I've just been elected last May. So it was quite a big shift for me. And, and personally, I try to bring a, an academic approach to uh, the chaos that is uh, politics in Canada mm -hmm. and to try to deal with fact based and evidence and, and uh, in all the areas that I'm working in I think uh, but you're right uh, within Parliament there's not a lot of folks that have uh, you know experience that are sitting there's a, there's a few on in each party that that, that has a, a bit of experience but but the, 
pre uh, prevailing uh, experience is not with uh, science or technology or or that kind of development within academic institutions or not. So, th so that is a bit of a problem with the culture and it'd be great to see more scientists, social scientists, uh, people from the humanities elected to office and that, that would be a good way forward. Um, but the other thing is that any government should be able to engage citizens, whatever topic. And, and that is the key here. That's, that's what we're doing here at this conference is we're kicking off our consultation with uh, the science community uh, for our party to develop a national science policy. Uh, uh, and what, how we're doing that is through various phases where we actually start by asking people what questions do you want asked. So it's not saying here's what we're doing, take it or leave it. It's, it's starting a dialogue very early in the process. Uh, we're way before the next election in 2015. This will give us a, a considerable amount of time to have some really in-depth conversations with people about where we need to go over the next 20 years. You see this as being a key issue? Absolutely. Uh, and I just compare us to our U.S. neighbors. Uh, you know, there's an election coming up uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, Obama, uh, you know, Barack Obama has sold himself as the science and technology president. Uh, he's committed himself to hiring uh, 10,000 more uh, science and math teachers in uh, elementary schools, uh, boost the percentage of expenditure on uh, research and development to 3% of the national GDP. I mean, this is who we're competing with. Our uh, investment in research and development in Canada is only currently 1.8% of our GDP, so we're almost half of what they're investing uh, as a nation in percentage-wise percentage -wise in research and, and development. And so it really is a commitment that, that you know, it, it's government and politics is all about priorities. And in the U.S., one of our main, you know, it's a, we cooperate, but they're also a big competitor of ours. They're really outspending us by leaps and bounds, and we have to recognize this. Uh, and in fact, a lot of our OECD competitors are outspending us. Uh, so that this is something we have to face as a nation and mm -hmm. decide what we're going to do about it. So it's interesting because you talk about being basically forward thinking when it comes to this. One of the comments that I've heard is that the problem in this country is a division between uh, provinces right. and provincial and federal governments. You've got a leader that has come out and criticized Alberta and blamed it for the problems that are going on in Ontario. Well, that's what to, to assert. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah. There, so that, that's one of the interpretations when he's saying that the oil industry has negatively impacted what's happening in Ontario. By driving the dollar up. Yes. Yep. So when you've got something like that happening, does that not then just keep the barriers up? Because you saw the reaction in Alberta to that. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me that we didn't, you know, get together and circle the wagon, so to speak, and, uh, and stand together against that comment. So if you're going to have comments like that, how do you then hope to come up with a national strategy on something? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, today we just had uh, a representative from the government of Alberta actually agree with exactly what we're saying, is that there, we need a national science policy, and we need to make sure that we don't just let an obsession with innovation destroy what we have is, is basic science. And I, and I think all provinces are open to that because, frankly, the federal government funds research in Canada. Mm -hmm. the, the provinces fund the, the, the basics of the universities, but really almost all the funding or the large percentage comes from the federal government. So if the federal government decided to spend more money on science, which is, again, something that we'll have to work through, I think that we could come together very quickly and, and uh, think, you know, come together in terms of developing national science policy. The thing about science is it's not constrained by borders, right? I mean, uh, the peer review process or the sharing of information uh, with basic science, it's not like it's constrained to a city or a province or, or a, a country. country. Yeah. That's right. And so, so that way it does make it a very uh, good issue for the federal government to focus upon. And, and I do think that uh, despite, uh, you know, despite tensions between federal and provincial governments, I do think there is a real hunger out there for the federal government to take, uh, to take uh, a bold direction in, on this policy area. When it comes to a conference like this where they're bringing together people from various walks of life and, and different countries, what sort of benefit do you see from it, from this event? Well, uh, I know uh, my own grants that I've received from Shirk in the past that, you know, initially they would make you focus on the area you were in, but over the years they've graduated to where you want a much more multidisciplinary approach to, to solving problems. I see that at this conference and you see it really around the world. So, so you want your scientists, the hardcore in the lab or th uh, people doing theory, mixing with the applied technicians, but also the social scientists because they're the ones who figure out, for example, how does the public digest this 
information? How is your, uh, within your company, is your organizational behavior uh, working to be innovative? So, so I mean, it is, it really takes all, you know, all the good heads together to come up with a policy that's going to work. And, and that's why a, pro a conference like this is so important because you are getting that crosstalk um, and maybe uh, future collaborations that come out of these types of events that uh, is really the direction everything's going in. So it's a, it's a great, uh, great undertaking. Kennedy, thank you very much. Thank you. We've been chatting with Kennedy Stewart, Opposition MP for the NDP. Thanks very much. Thank you.